Hey guys, it is Friday evening here in the Philippines, so it is time for us to do our first free-for-all weekend video. And yes, I said first because we'll probably do one, maybe even two more this weekend because I'm trying to conclude all of our bigger scale stuff and then uh, be done with it for now uh, and primarily focus on 164 stuff from here on out. Um... Still yet, there may be the rare occasion once I get back to the States where I pick up a bigger scale item, maybe even here, but I'm going to try to stick solely with 164th until I get back to the States, just because it's easier to maintain, easier to store, especially with the size of our place here. We don't have a lot of extra room, so we're phasing out the bigger scale things, although some stuff I'm keeping, like this charger is a keeper for me, a couple 143rd cars are keepers for me. Uh, but anyways, still yet, wanted to finish showing them to you since we started the other week and I said that I would finish this up uh, during the next month or so. So this car you've seen before in a 69 Charger video that I did, actually it was a second gen Charger video I did, 68 to 70s, and um, you got a brief look at it, but I wanted to bring it back and show it to you in its entirety. Uh, because it is a gorgeous car. They did a heck of a nice job on this vehicle. Um, and by them, I mean uh, Danbury Mint. And this is a 124th vehicle from them, and it is gorgeous. This is the box it comes in. Uh, this is your Fragile Handle of Care, limited edition, 1969 Dodge Charger 500. Open here, meaning that end, and then you have your UPC here. Uh, then you have your limited edition 1969 Charger 500. Uh, then on the other end cap, you have your licensing from Dodge. And once again, your limited edition 1969 Dodge Charger 500. Your UPC code and serial number says made in China and so forth. And then it says open here. Actually, I think I already opened from the other end, but anyways, we'll open from here this time and slide it out. And it is enclosed in styrofoam. So we'll throw the white chipper box to the side here. And on the top, just says 1969 Dodge Charger 500. Be careful, do not remove this foam top before reading the unpacking instructions enclosed in the accompanying envelope otherwise you may accidentally break your replica please read the instructions first so the envelope i already opened and it actually gives you a cool little registration card if you guys don't have one of these yet uh this is my first danbury mint never really collected them but had to get this one because of being a mopar and for the price i got it for it was very Fair. So this actually is a certificate they give you if you buy them brand new and they will put your name on it like David Scott Happelt. Uh, not sure who he is, but he is the original owner of this vehicle. And uh, anyways, it tells you the vehicle, Dodge, make a vehicle, year 1969, new, you have the X there, number of cylinders, eight, color, and it is Hemi Orange, model name, Charger 500, body style, coupe. Seller, seller's name, the Danbury Mint, seller's address, 47 Richards Avenue, city or town, Norwalk, Connecticut. And then their zip. And it's signed by Peter Magellan, director of the Danbury Mint. This is limited to 5,000 pieces. Um, and anyways, it may actually have a serial number on it. I don't remember, don't recall. So we'll see what number it is. Maybe it does have one near the gas tank, if I'm thinking right. Um, but anyways, it's kind of cool. They give you your own like title for the vehicle. And then the instructions they give you. Now this, I'm not going to read all of them, but it does go through everything pretty thoroughly. Like unpacking, open the presentation box and remove the foam package. Make certain to keep the be careful marking in sight and place the package on a table. Carefully remove the upper half of the foam. Then they say to pick up the replica, you're supposed to gently grab the side of the cars just behind the doors and carefully lift. To examine underside, Grab the same area and turn the car over. 
To open and close the hood, they say place your fingernail under the edge. Then where to insert it, just above the grill. And gently lift up to close the hood, gently press it down. To open and close the trunk, same routine as the hood. To open and close the doors, it grasps the top of either door and gently swing it open until you meet resistance. To close, push the door in gently. Operate the steering and with the front wheels off the ground, open the driver's door and gently turn the steering wheel. Some people may try to do this with the car on the ground and break the steering wheel. So I guess this is a good one to point out. All of the others are pretty obvious. Operate the suspension, place the car on a table and with one index finger on the trunk and one index finger on the hood, gently press down, release, and the suspension will spring back into place. To operate the antenna, place your fingernail under the antenna and gently pull up. And to lower, press down. So then even the gas filler door opens, which I'm going to show you guys that. And it just says to open the gas filler door, place your fingernail under the cap and gently pull it towards the front of the car. To close the fuel filler door, gently push it back into place. The care for the replica, aside from gently handling and safely displaying your replica, requires little care. Its hand wax surface will retain its shine for years to come. Questions, call this phone number here. And that is pretty much it. That is your how to handle your new 124th Danbury Mint car and how to unpack it. Well, it's already been unpacked, so hopefully I don't break it. Actually, there is one little spot I'll point out that I did break when I was actually dusting it. Um, and it was like one that I would not have expected to break. So, top pulls off, you have your wax paper there. And or whatever kind of paper you want to call it. I say wax. It kind of feels like the old wax paper. So then we'll pick the car up. I always pick it up by the sides of the roof near the drip rail, which I probably shouldn't do that because it will probably break the drip rail if you continuously do this type of maneuver. But it is the easiest way to pull out of there. So let's go ahead and try to zoom in here. And this car is gorgeous. Love the... Stillies with the poverty caps, dog dish caps, police caps, whatever you'd like to call them. Very beautiful setup. Gives it that no frills, all business look to it. Looks great. Uh, the Hemi Orange, one of my favorite colors from Mopar, the black tail stripe. And what is really cool is that it says 500 instead of RT like they typically do. Then on your door, you have your Hemi badge, and they even have your Pentastar on the bottom of the passenger fender, which is the only place those are located. And then you can see your charger emblem on the B pillar. That is the thing that I accidentally broke when waxing it. One of the threads from my rag grabbed it. Not this one, but the other side. So these things are very delicate, so you need to be careful. As you can see, the ER is kind of missing, and you can see the little nipple that did... I don't know if that's where it just glued on or if that's actually a small precision hole drilled and that nipple went inside to the B pillar. But that is the only mishap I've had with mine. And it is a very nice, delicate model. And as they said, the gas cap does work. And let me set it down and try to finagle this forward for you guys. And it is kind of cool, but it's kind of like spring loaded too. Um, Oh, well, let's see, they said rotate it toward the front of the car. And there you go. So you can see that it slides open, very cool. And then just kind of push it back in place, push down, and it is closed. So love the gas filler caps on the Mopars, pretty cool. Very nice, all the trim around the windows, drip rail trim, the reveal trim side mirror, vent windows, door handles, door locks, and then beautifully detailed interior. And it does have actual cloth or fabric, carpet, a little hard to see in there because uh, it's all black, has the wood grain on the console. 
and then it does have your four speed shifter I believe it is a four speed car and then you have all of your detailed gauges and such you have all of your window cranks door handles everything on the door panel which is nicely done and then one of the key features of a 500 that I will point out same thing you'll see on the Dodge Daytona and I brought back our 143rd car to point out other things so the, what the regular RT has versus the 500 so if you can notice the back window on this they're both 69s this is your standard 69 RT if you notice how the back window is recessed well on the 500 and on the Daytona they actually put a window plug they call it that inserts into this area it's not a different roof it's just an insert that goes in here and makes the back window flush with the B pillars to kind of give it that fast back aerodynamic look uh, then, turning it around, we'll go ahead and show you the other 500 feature, and this will about wrap it up for the 500. You notice that grill with the exposed headlights and kind of the flush mount to it, and it's wide open, no split to it. And let me give you a closer look at that. And you can see how beautifully done Danbury Mint did this with the Charger 500 emblem. This grill is actually from a 68 Coronet. So they did this to kind of make it flush with the front instead of having the recess grill, I guess, so it doesn't trap air and it kind of just hits the air and makes it flow across the hood and then down the roof and down the back window. So nowhere for the air to get trapped. So anyways, that is another key feature of the 500. And here is your standard 69 front end with the split grill. The 68s had the wide open grill, no split to it, but they were recessed and they also had hideaway headlights like this one, the 69 RT. So the 68 is on it, or 69 500 is kind of like the 68, but does not have the uh, hideaway headlights. Headlights are exposed and it is flush mounted uh, instead of being recessed. So that is your key features of your 500 versus your regular standard RT charger. Uh, your 68 core in that grill and your rear window plug to make it a fastback. So when they found out that 68 core in that grill wasn't doing it justice, that's when they put that bullet nose on the front of it and the really high wing and then you had your Dodge Daytona. So, anyways, since we're up front, let's go ahead and pop this hood open and take a look at the engine. And this is very nicely done because the hood hinges are not like your typical, like, 118 cars or your standard cheaper die cast. These actually simulate, like, the Mopar hood hinges. And you have your big 426 Hemi down in there. Everything's nicely done. All the plug wires, heater hoses... Uh, then you have your coil mounted to the front of the intake. You can see there near the distributor. Uh, your battery, even battery cables and such. So very nicely done. Your master cylinder. And then your windshield washer tank radiator with your radiator cap. All your radiator hoses and such. So very, very nicely done detail under the hood. Uh, all your warning stickers for the fan and such. Then your black cover over the grill area. So very, very nice there. And then the hood closes. Then you have your detailed wipers, windshield trim. And then your what? Uh, antenna even lifts up as they said just kind of pull up and there you go you have your retracting antenna so that is another cool feature of this car and then they said it has suspension so working front working rear but rear is a little stiff Front's a little more durable, but the rear has leaf springs, so that's why. So when I say that, the leaf springs are those big arch springs that go from here to there, front to back. 
and then you see the detail underneath. These actually I would have argued that would have had more orange overspray and probably would have just been a gray primer underneath with orange overspray. That's about how these cars left the factory. They were not painted black unless this is to simulate some kind of undercoating but most of the time these cars were dipped in primer and then dipped in their paint or not dipped in the paint but shot so you get the overspray that goes into about that far and then the rest underneath is usually like a gray primer. Highway 61 does that on a lot of their um, 118th replicas and they nail it with that. It's beautiful because it has like that perfect overspray going into maybe the center of the floorboards and then inside the tranny, tranny tunnel and center floorboards, it's still gray primer. So it looks very, very accurate. So yes, this is serial number, number 2237 of 5000, limited edition. And then you have your four speed detail, your bottom of your Hemi, the oil pan and everything, your K-frame, everything is done very nicely your torsion bars so very nicely done model as I said the underneath I would have probably done orange paint over a gray primer like the highway 61's they nail it with theirs it looks very authentic so then turning him around we have some very detailed tail lights and then once again you have your charger emblem there uh, and then 1969 plate and I'm not sure if I'm missing part of the charger emblem back here or what but uh, it just doesn't look complete to me and then you have your tail lights that's nicely done your trunk lock and such and then your opening deck lid and then it gives you your jack instructions on the bottom of the deck lid and authentic looking trunk hinges then inside here you even have like your back buckets for the tail lights which is done in gray which is very nicely done let's close our antenna there so it doesn't break you have your trunk mat your spare tire in there. You can even see the gas filler tube going down there and your jack on the side. So very, very fine model. All the details there. And then, yeah, you have your 500 emblem underneath your tail light there. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm missing half my charger emblem back here too. As I said, you got to be kind of careful with the rags because those threads will grab those little emblems and pull them off. Uh, then you have your backup lens, lenses and your rear valence panel. They even went through the trouble of detailing like your bumper bolt heads and everything. Very nice. So close the trunk. Go ahead and swing open the passenger door. And it does have cloth fabric seat belts, but they don't move. They are laying there, but they do have separate buckles and such, as you can see. Very nice car. All the detailed latch assemblies for the door. Even the door like striker inside the door jam there. And the actual real latch. So very, very nice. Even your sill plates holding the carpet down there. That's why I opened it again to see if those were there. So very cool car. Yeah, happy to have this 124th in my collection. I build a couple 124th plastic model kits too, but I don't do a lot in the 124th stuff. But um, this is actually a really cool uh, die cast to have. Maybe when I get back to the States, I will get a couple of the Mopar Highway 61s because they are really, really cool, really nicely done cars. Uh, I'd show you guys what I meant about the floor pan, but here trying to load all this stuff back to the States in another year or so, or another few months or so, hopefully, it's going to be a little bit complex, so that's why we're eliminating some of the bigger stuff. But this one is one that I have to keep because I got it for a very reasonable price here. So I'm going to hang on to him. Um, 
So this is a close-up look at the uh, Danbury Mint 124th Dodge Charger 500 from back in 2003, I believe, is when it was released. 2003 or 2004. The copyright for the Dodge licensing is 2003. So I'm going to say that they launched it in 03 or 04. So very cool piece. And I hope you guys enjoyed the close-up look at it. And if you have not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. Please give me a thumbs up. Please tell your friends about my channel and share the video. And we will be back again tomorrow, uh, Saturday night, with some 143rd Matchbox Yesteryear Chevy Muscle and truck. So we'll be taking a look at a couple of them tomorrow. So uh, until then, guys, enjoy your Friday, and I will see you Saturday night. Thanks for watching.